Yo, what's going on, guys? It's Houston Sports Talk back in another video today, and today we're going to be recapping the Houston Texans' day of free agency. I believe today is basically day seven because this whole thing started last Monday. Today's Monday. So day seven of NFL free agency. Um, now, we've had some days where the Texans haven't done anything. Uh, the last two days have been pretty active for these Houston Texans. Today, they make three free agency um signings yesterday they traded brandon cooks to dallas for a fifth round pick and a sixth round pick they extend larmy tunsil to a three-year 75 million dollar deal so these last two days they the texans have been pretty active uh the previous days before the texans made the two moves yesterday they were a little quiet in the last uh couple days before that but today in the afternoon and a little bit of the later afternoon or what started at like 4 30 and then the other signing was about uh 5 30 near maybe six o'clock for the texans got three signings here to talk about at 4 30 it is announced that the texans are signing dalton schultz and devin singletary tight end and running back i love these signings for the texans here i mean dalton schultz at tight end for the texans next season this is such an upgrade at tight end you know I got to give props to Jordan Akins because last season, he was huge for the Texans. He did a great job. He was a great tight end, did a lot of things, had a great catches, a lot of great catches. I, you know, I know he gets a little, a little hate on because of that catch he had, or that touchdown he had on the, the big fourth and 28 for the Texans, kind of dropped it, and the Texans could have got the first overall pick. That was a, number one. That was a great play. That was a great catch. Might have not been what we wanted at the time, but that was still a great play. Had a great season for the Texans. Stepped up, had a lot of touchdowns, had a lot of receiving yards, did a lot for the Texans. But still, this is still a huge upgrade for the Texans at tight end. Last season, with missing, um, still missing two games for the Cowboys, Dalton Schultz had um, 50 or near 60 rece uh, re receptions. 570 something receiving yards and five receiving touchdowns plus his wild card performance against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers where he had seven receptions 95 receiving yards and two receiving touchdowns against the Bucks so you plus his season performance plus his playoff performance you got a hell of a tight end right there. He's a guy who's a great blocker. He's going to be a great receiver for the Texans as well. That's just another weapon for whoever's coming in to be Houston Texans next season as their quarterback. Whether it's Bryce Young, CJ Shroud, Anthony Richardson, or or God forbid, which I will, which I might not become, which I might um, switch fan bases if it becomes Will Levy's, which I don't think we're ever going to have to uh, go to there. So whoever's throwing the ball for the Texans next season, whether it's CJ or it's Price or uh, even if we like what we see from Anthony Richardson, he, that quarterback has a lot of new weapons. I mean, you had two decent wide receivers already before this offseason started with Collins and, and John Mechie. You've added in Robert Woods, a really good veteran who had, may I remind you, he had 550 receiving yards on a Titans offense that is like basically... All they do is give the ball to Derrick Henry. They added in a guy like Noah Brown, who had a really excellent season, also had 500 receiving yards and three touchdowns with the Cowboys. He'll have, he'll do a lot for the Texans next season. And they've added in a guy like Singletary, who we'll talk about in a second, who did a lot for the Bills last season as a starting running back. And now you've added in a guy like Dalton Schultz. I think this will do a lot for the Texans' offense. And just there's just a lot of new weapons for whoever's throwing the ball. I personally think, you know, just going to get out of the air. I think, personally, I think who will be throwing the ball for the Texans next season will be Bryce Young. But I mean, honestly, things can change. There's a lot of time. We, I mean, today is March 20th. We're, we're nearing a month away from the draft. So there's still a lot of time. There's still a lot of things to happen. And, yeah. So let's move on to the Singletary signing. The Texans, literally a minute or two minutes after Schultz was announced, then it is announced that we are signing Devin Singletary. I love this addition for the Texans. Let's go over his stats from last season. He had 820 rushing yards 
and five rushing touchdowns, and then 280 receiving yards and one receiving touchdown. So he was also a really nice receiving back, and he was a decent rushing back as well for the Bills. Averaged four and a half yards per carry, did a lot of decent stuff for the Bills last season, and still there was other guys like James Cook involved in, in the uh, James Cook involved in the offense uh, for the Bills last season. As a for backup um, for the Texans, I think he'll do really well. I think he'll provide a solid backup role for the Texans. Um, something I did talk about in my original Devin Singletary video where I just talked about the Singletary signing, I did say that I thought that, you know, if, God forbid, Damian Pierce goes down like he did at the end of the season uh, for a couple games, uh, which I don't think will happen in my opinion. I do think Pierce will have a really healthy 23 season. But if, God forbid, you've got Pierce going down uh, for a game or two, you know, if, you know, a small little injury pops up, he's a game-time scratch, He's not able to go. You got a really, really solid starting running back uh, in replacement in Singletary to to fill that role for that one game or multiple games or however long he's out if he does miss a game. Um, but I mean, yeah, he's a guy who would fill in that role, and he's going to be a great backup, um, you know, for the Texans, anyways. But you know, if you look at those final last couple games for the Texans with when Pierce went down, I mean. You know, I liked, you know, DeRay and and Burkhead, but they just, they weren't good. They weren't that great for the Texans offense. And the difference would, between Singletary and DeRay or Burkhead playing the running back when, when Pierce was was hurt will be a, a total difference for the Texans. Um, so, yeah, uh, it feels like the Texans finally got a really good backup running back, which we haven't had in, in, pa- in, in the past couple of years. I mean... Um, to start the you know the 2021 season, they had a stacked running back list. Of, they had like Mark Ingram and Philip Lindsay and David Johnson is like a three running back uh, set. But then by the end of the season, everybody was cut. I mean, um, Mark Ingram was like traded to the Saints. David Johnson was like cut, and then Philip Lindsay was cut as well. So you signed all those nice Pro Bowl running backs. And then they were all gone a matter of, you know, six, seven games. So, I mean, besides that, no one's, you know, no one's came close to a de- decent good running back, backup running back. So, yeah, I think for the Texans next season was adding in Singletary and Schultz. Which, and, and you've already added in Woods and Brown uh, and other small guys like Andrew Beck and Mike Boone. This offense is looking way better. And let's get to the other side of the offense with the O-line. The Texans signed Dolphins starting, former starting center Mike Boone. Uh, Michael uh, Deerton, um, who I I don't know if this is a for sure lock at starter for center next season, but I think there could be a little bit of a small competition between him and Quisenberry, uh, but I think he definitely will be the starting center for the Texans. This was a position the Texans needed to address at the offensive line. Uh, they really addressed everything else. They needed to address right guard. That's why they traded for Shaq Mason. Uh, so that was good for the Texans. They addressed that. Uh, they kept Lermy Tunsil at left tackle. Um, and then at uh, you have Kenyon Green playing right guard next season. Or not right guard, but um, you, you got him playing right tackle, I believe. And you got Titus Titus Howard as well. So the offensive line, if, if, if Titus Howard is healthy and Kenyon Green improves in his second year season, you got Shaq Mason in there. Right now, you got the four guys around the center. You got Tunsil, you got Shaq Mason, two veterans right there, and the two young guys with Titus Howard and Kenyon Green. I think if those two young guys improve right there, the veterans excel and improve the younger guys as well. And then you add in the nice center with Mike Brett, uh, Mike, I mean, sorry, Mike Michael um, Dearden. I, I think that this old line has definitely improved as well. So offensively, this, this offense has improved enormously. And with adding in these new offensive additions, no – Keep in mind when I say this, I have no absolute thought at keeping Davis Mills at the quarterback position next season for the Texans. But I was having a conversation with someone earlier, and I was saying, how different do you think Davis Mills would look as a quarterback with all these new additions, with guys adding in guys like Dalton Schultz, who's an enormous tight end, Devin Singletary as a backup running back, new wide receivers like Noah Brown and Robert Woods, and plus – a guy like John Mechie who you didn't even have next season. Um, now that – with all these new guys coming in, now that, that's a reason why I want Davis Mills to stay as the backup quarterback for the Texans. 
Um, even though you draft someone, I would like to see, um, personally, in my opinion, I'd like to see Davis Mills be the backup quarterback for the Texans next season. And I'd like to, you know, have a, like the first preseason game the Texans have next season. I'd like whoever the rookie quarterback is to sit on the sidelines for that one game and see Davis Mills with the number one guys and see what he looks like with those new guys like Schultz, Singletary, Woods, Metsu returning, um, Noah Brown, and see how better how how different he looks. Um, and then after that week one preseason matchup, then you give it to the rook. But um, you know, Davis Mills had it. You know, he he wasn't that great in two thousand twenty two, but he was he. In my opinion, for Davis Mills, I think he was decent for the guys he had around him. I mean, if you look at the the wide receivers besides Cooks, he had nobody to throw the ball to. So. And I get you had Nico, but sometimes Nico wasn't even ready to go. He was he had some injury problems in 2022. So honestly, you know, the thought has crossed my mind of, you know, why not go Will Anderson at two and give Davis Mills a third chance with this new improved offense? But you just can't do that. I don't think Mills is good enough to be a starter in this league. I think he could be a decent starter for like, you know, a backup and then replacing a starter if they get injured, but as a for a full time starter, I don't think that's what he is in this league, and um, I wish him the best. And I think he could very well be the backup for the Texans next season. But I I did have to you know come to thought after these signings happened for the Texans today, and the two other signings with Noah Brown and Robert Woods, and then some of the other small signings, and then the improved offensive line as well. With you know thinking of how many times Mills was sacked last season, how would Davis Mills look with this new off season for this with this new offense for the Texans? You guys have your thoughts on the on on the signing to the Texans today. That's it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed and peace out. Go Texans.